delighted to be here and to have the opportunity to speak with you at InspireFest 2018. Today I want to start by recognizing a truly amazing and intriguing lady, Amelia Earhart. For those of you who don't know her, Amelia Earhart flew across the Atlantic Ocean nearly 90 years to the day today on the 17th of June in 1928 as a co-pilot. Not satisfied with this, four years later, she flew it again, solo. When interviewed as to why she did that, she said, everybody has an ocean to cross if they have the heart to do it. Now that really struck a chord with me. Everybody has an ocean to cross. Some might be small, some might be large. Some people might cross many oceans. Some people might take many flights to cross their ocean. So today, what I would like to share with you is the story of my ocean so far. Some of the challenges, some of the opportunities. I'll share some really interesting facts and figures but then again, I'm a banker, so you may not find facts and figures quite so interesting. We'll reflect on how things are changing in relation to diversity, and in particular, gender diversity. We'll look at some things that companies have done, but also what more needs to be done. And finally, I hope to share with you some of the learnings from my journey that might help each of you in crossing your own oceans. So let's start with a little bit about me. Yes, this is me. I have my mother to thank for this photo. I'm the youngest of four children. I'm a dub, born and bred. My mom brought us up on her own, and she was a full-time working mother. So she was very much an early role model for me. Many of the females in my family are teachers. My mom, my sister, my aunts, and my grandmother. So I very much booked that trend when I did commerce in college, went on to do a master's in finance, and then went on for a career in banking. Perhaps that was my first ocean crossing. In my career, I learned from the ground up. I started in branch banking, went on into the dealing room. I've held roles in mortgages, I've run the contact center, and I'm now the director of distribution channels. That role entails working with 2,600 colleagues, engaging with customers across branches, across the contact center, and across all digital channels. What makes me very proud is that in an awful lot of those roles, I was the first female to hold them. So hopefully, helping others see the way. In addition to my role in Bank of Ireland, as Anne mentioned, I'm also honored to be the first female president of the Institute of Banking. But another role which keeps me particularly busy is my parental duties. I have four children, twin boys and two girls. And like any parents, myself and my husband want the best for our children. We want our daughters and our sons to have equal opportunities. I would hate to think that either my boys or my girls have any doors closed to them based on their gender. I'm lucky I can say that I never felt that my gender closed any doors for me in progressing my career. However, when I look back over my career, where there asks of me or comments made that when I look back, I thought nothing of the time, but perhaps wouldn't happen today? Let me digress and share a few examples with you. My first job in branch banking, I was assigned to the back office, which is where the, the new starters were. I was processing checks and drafts in a, a big old, old machine. Shortly after that, a male colleague joined, and he moved straight into the prestigious cashier role. I remember being puzzled by this and asking my manager at the time, how come he got to go into the cashier role? And the answer I got, which was said in a very deadpan way, was he's seen as a branch manager of the future, so there's no need for him to start in the back office. Later in my career, I have sometimes found myself as the one that's asked to collect the visitors from reception, or the one that's asked to organize the teas and coffees for the meeting. And I wonder, is that because I was the most junior in the room, or perhaps because I was the only female in the room? So in hindsight, these are real examples of unconscious bias. But I also have to look back and challenge myself. 
is there any role that I played? So for example, when I started off in the dealing room in the treasury area, the first thing I did was to go out and buy myself a pinstripe trouser suit. Now, thankfully, I don't have any photographs of that to share, but I was trying to not necessarily be more of a male or more like the males around me, but I was definitely trying to blend in and be less of myself. But that's enough about me for a moment. I want to look at another female role model, Mary Barra, who has said that cultivating diversity isn't about taking a gender count when you walk into a room. Of course, she's right. Diversity is so much more. It's about valuing everyone with different backgrounds and different experiences. I have found that diversity in teams is that secret sauce that leads to high performance and success. This is an important point for me. I truly believe that when people are their true selves, they're not acting as they perceive others want them to act. It creates an environment of trust, an environment of deeper understanding, and ultimately, an environment of success. Diversity is hugely important in a modern workplace. And based on my own experience, it's something I'm extremely passionate about. So now for the bit you've been waiting for, the facts and figures. A higher percentage of women than men have attained a third level qualification. Within the Institute of Banking's membership, we have a strong female membership at 59%. However, as we start going up the educational attainment scale, things start to change, and not for the better. As we move to the top level qualification of certified bank director, only 23% are women. So more women than men have a third level qualification, more women than men are members of the Institute of Banking. But as we move to the more senior levels of the qualification and education, things start to decline and at an alarming rate. So if I move away from financial services and look at STEM, and some of the earlier uh, presenters have spoken about these statistics, but women in STEM is at 25% in Ireland, which is seen as strong versus the European average. But it's still a very stark number. And when we look at Irish employment, it's similar. 34% of managers, directors, and senior officials are women. Now, even for somebody who's not a banker, the next one is my statistic of the day. Within Fortune 500 companies, there are more CEOs named John or named David than all of the women CEOs put together. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about that. So I could spend all of my time quoting statistics. I just think I'd possibly be the only one that would enjoy it. But what they will all do is show a very, very similar story. It's a very stark picture. And ironically, when we think of women as our customers and women as our overall population, there's a number of statistics where there's a much stronger female representation. So for example, when it comes to purchasing decisions, 85% are influenced by women. When it comes to social media, 80%, eight out of 10 Twitter users with over 10 million followers are women. And when it comes to success in the corporate world, when you look at the top 20% of financially successful companies, they have twice as many women leaders. So diversity contributes to better commercial success it contributes to better all-around board performance, and ultimately, it's better both for the companies, their shareholders, and their employees. So companies are starting to realize that diversity is not the problem. It's the solution. This reminds me a little bit of when I moved from primary school into secondary school in Ireland. So when you're around the age 12, and I remember when I was in sixth class and a bit nervous about moving, someone said to me, the great news is, in the maths books in secondary school, the answer is at the back of the book. And I thought this was brilliant. I thought, thank God, don't tell the teachers. You've got the question, you've got the answer. We're sorted, no homework. Well, this is a bit like that. We know the answer to more success. It's proven that greater diversity 
at corporate level will lead to better commercial success. We know the problem in that we can see the low statistics across a myriad of industries in a myriad of different areas. But we don't seem to be able to get from the problem to the solution. And we need to start joining those dots. So what are companies doing to do that? What are they addressing? But in the past 12 months in financial services, we have seen some firsts. My own organization, Bank of Ireland, has appointed its first female CEO, Francesca McDonough, the first for an Irish bank. The Institute of Banking has appointed its first female CEO, Mary O'Dea, and I'm honored to be the first female president. Ultimately, the banking sector is playing catch up, but we are getting there. And I'm proud to say we're joining many influential women leading out in business in Ireland in companies like Vodafone, PayPal, Microsoft, Twitter, Dell, the Irish Stock Exchange Board, VIA. I could go on, and that's a great complaint to have. As an organization, Bank of Ireland wants to be the national champion bank in Ireland. To do that, we need to enable our customers, our colleagues, and our communities to thrive. But to enable our customers and our communities to thrive, we must first look internally and champion the wealth of diversity within our organization. So inclusion and diversity is front and central, optimizing the potential through inclusion and driving our performance through diversity. That all sounds good, but the difference and the reason I believe we're on a journey of real change is because there are actions and measurements and we are treating this like we would a different business metric in terms of how we're going to get there. So we've set up six diversity networks to embed the right standards, behaviors, and governance across our organization. My colleague, Jerry Ellis, spoke earlier about accessibility. I'm touching on points around gender balance. But as you can see, diversity within Bank of Ireland covers so much more. The Bank of Ireland Group was awarded the Champion Inclusion and Diversity Strategy in the 2018 HR Champion Awards. This is a milestone for us a milestone in our journey to embed change, and a sign that the work underway is moving us in the right direction. Let me give you a couple of examples of how we're embedding that change. We have senior executives sponsoring each of those networks. We have set an organizational goal for 50-50 gender balance in all senior appointments by 2021. We've joined the 30% Club and a number of other pan-industry partnerships. And then locally, to ensure we have ongoing engagement and an always-on culture for inclusion and diversity. We have launched an Accelerate Female Talent Strategy. We are educating in inclusive leadership, and we also have available to all employees unconscious bias training. We're also looking at modern ways of working around flexibility. So I believe that the work that my organization and others are doing will make a difference from a gender perspective and overall in terms of inclusion and diversity. But one area I want to touch on, where I believe there is more work to do, is building the bench of senior female talent. Let me share with you an example that I think highlights this issue. Across three senior roles internally, which had 15 applicants, only one woman applied. So, this puzzled me, it disappointed me, but I had to get behind it. So I spoke to a number of females across the organization just to find out what was stopping them putting themselves forward. And either explicitly or implicitly, there was one word that kept coming up, and that word was fear. Fear that they didn't tick the box on every single requirement on the application form. Fear that they wouldn't be successful Fear that they won't be able to balance their work-life commitments. Fear that they'd have less, less flexibility for those emergency calls potentially from home. So we as role models need to help female talent to get beyond fear. We need to have more honest conversations around balancing it all. I've never mess, missed a parent-teacher meeting. There are some I wish I'd missed, but I've never missed a parent-teacher meeting. I've never missed a school play. But I don't think we're honest about that, so people looking up feel that they'll have less flexibility if they get more senior. What can you do? Let me reference a quote from Ban Ki-moon. 
Achieving gender equality requires the engagement of women and men, girls and boys. It is everybody's responsibility. Each of us has a personal responsibility to ensure that the momentum towards meaningful change continues. Finally, I promised I'd share some insights as to what each of you could potentially do to cross your own oceans. I also like to call these tips I wish I'd told my 20-year-old self. Be confident in your own abilities. Be yourself and bring your whole self to work. Take brave steps and back yourself. Have the courage to ask for help. Build support networks, both business and social. And possibly most importantly of all, be kind to yourself. So I'm going to leave you with the final quote from Amelia Earhart, which I think sums it all up perfectly. Some of us have great runways already built for us. If you have one, take off. If you don't have one, grab a shovel and build one for yourself. Thank you.